from the beautiful country of Indonesia and in Bali, Shankar and I are still coming to you live today because that's what we do. We're here to show up for you and help you get some mindfulness into your day, to start your day or continue your day or end your day, thinking about things that are really going to impact you in terms of reducing stress and helping you to maybe look a little bit differently at the everyday things that happen in your life and ultimately we want you to grow in your business and succeed. And I have to also mention and on December 19th, Tuesday, December 19th at 8 a.m., we're having a grow challenge just for you. And so this will be an opportunity to take all of those mindfulness concepts that you've learned, show up online to be authentic, be yourself, give your special gift to the world. And you get to do that for four days with them. And of course, I'll be there cheering you on. But today, the talk is all about building resilience. Uh, the Williams sisters, the Serena and Venus Williams was a household family name for me growing up. Give me a thumbs up or a heart if you too are familiar with the Williams sisters. This room came about because I, we had a long flight. I mean, this, this was, this is probably the longest flight I've ever taken in my life. The last time I was in Bali, I was actually living in Korea, in South Korea. I was working with the Ministry of Education. I'd been there for I think a year and a half before I decided to go to Bali as a gift for my graduation. I was doing a master's degree that I started in the UK and I had done a study, a dissertation in Korea, but I finished everything um, and I wanted to celebrate. So. My mentor and I, we flew to Bali, and but it, you know, it was not this kind of journey. It was not from North America. It was not from Texas. It just, how long was this flight, Shankar? I feel like it was forever. First flight was six hours, and then 12 hours, and another nine hours. Yeah, so imagine that. But we made it, we're here, and we're going to continue to be here. And I'm going to ask you to share the room now so you can invite your network in so everyone can join in on this conversation about Miss and Serena Williams, who are huge influential figures, not just in the world of tennis, also not just in the athlete world, but to anyone who is going after success as, a, as an entrepreneur and a business person, there are a lot of parallels between athletes and entrepreneurs and I on that long flight watched King Richard King Richard it was a very powerful powerful movie and I just couldn't stop thinking about wow I have to share the key takeaways that I took and how it relates to us in terms of our building up resilience and how we can leverage some of that athlete magic in our business and hopefully use it to gain success. There was so much dedication, there was so much strategic planning. I didn't know actually how strategic the planning was, but their father was their manager, obviously played a huge pivotal role in their success. I'll just give you a little background of them. Venus and Serena grew up in Compton and that is an area known for its tough environment. Their father, Richard introduced them to tennis after he was watching a tennis player win a tournament. You get huge deals and we actually had a professional tennis player in our home for a couple of years and she just, I mean, they work and they work and they work, but they do have really good financial opportunities. So even though their father had no formal background, he learned the game himself and then he coached his daughters along with his wife on public courts in Compton. And so already, already you have a non-trained individual who has this dream for his children. And even though they had no resources and you could imagine the skepticism because this is a black man from Compton destined to 
it was described in the movie as like, you're asking me to believe when he was looking for sponsors and looking for coaches to train them. You're asking me to believe you've got the next two Mozarts in your house. And of course, little did they know he did. But it was just training and training and training, but it got to a point where he knew, okay, this is outside of my scope. I, I need to get them professional coaches who can take them to the next level. And I just think that in itself is really, it really speaks to what you can do when you have your mind set. They didn't start with a father who had a formal background in tennis, unlike even some lawyers and doctors who have, who come from a family line or a background of people being in that field. But that just also lets you know that when you set your mind to it, and we know this is not new information, you can achieve incredible things, but <laughs> the amount of skepticism that this guy faced, he had a 78 page plan for their careers. 78 pages, I think just having that plan alone, you knew, he knew he was going to face skepticism. So the first thing we need to do, I think, is plan and plan really, really, really well against all odds. And get yourself in a position where you can train. And then so he's, he basically scripted out their careers and he included delaying their entry into tennis so that they could focus on training but also on their education and he shielded them from a lot of media pressure and these are things that i didn't really know because i always assumed these two tennis players what venus is a or serena is a 23 time grand grand slam champion and we know much more about venus i believe than than serena but they both have incredible accomplishments but he shielded them from a lot of pressure and overexposure at a young age just so that they had time to be children so Venus won seven Grand Slam single titles, five Wimbledon championships. She won four Olympic gold medals, one in singles and three in doubles alongside Serena. She won 49 single titles and over her career, she was the first black woman in the open era to become the uh, number one. So show of hearts or thumbs, if you believe that, is just an incredible feat, an incredible accomplishment for someone that did not come from a formally trained, like didn't have a family of tennis players or come from money or come from that kind of legacy. So I want you to listen to the trailer because their story is just so unlikely and there's so many powerful scenes in King Richard. One of them is when the neighbor comments on their, on their training in the rain, but because their lives were basically scripted and maybe we're a bit older now, we obviously won't have our parents scripting our lives, one thing he said, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So this strong work ethic made him look like a crazy individual to where they had the cops called on them for playing in the rain. And, and but, but they had really good academics and they had five children, five daughters. But how many of us are planning for success with that kind of conviction? where people are gonna call the cops on you because they think that you're crazy with your training philosophy or your, your uh, business drive. I mean, I don't know if we'll have the cops called on a Shankar, but I do know that people have told us like, you work too much and they don't even know the first thing, but they just assume, right? But to some extent, it's just, it's something you have to do if you have a plan for your life. Uh, so I'll play that clip right now for you. Okay, so very, very powerful. I really encourage you to watch it. Give me a thumbs up or heart now if you're gonna maybe watch King Richard, consider it. Came out a couple of years ago, still just as powerful. I, I love the message of the movie and I just love the drive and the energy and, and what it means to surround yourself with, a, with people in your life. Even like I said, it's not your family, we're not children anymore. But that kind of confidence and the resilience that you've gained I just, there's also a clip in the film that I'll play and what stood out to me was the scene where their father, Richard, is defending Venus's confidence during an interview because one thing that continually will happen to you on top of people thinking that you may be workaholics or uh, a workaholic or that you may be just 
seem too big is people will think that you're getting cocky and we did a whole series on that last week uh where we just looked at the confidence of these billionaires or mindset so we had looked at examined jeff bezos we examined elon musk john d rockefeller plenty of people who what they were doing especially and steve jobs th these people were trailblazers and forerunners there wasn't and i mean there are a lot of people in the world besides just these few handful of billionaires with a certain demographic but they're so well known and we use much of their products so much today that it would be impossible to think of life without those products and those things but it came from this obsession and confidence and drive that the world saw as narcissistic. But specifically in the case of the of the Williams sisters, because they don't have the same demographic, one has to wonder, but that's a conversation for another day. How do you keep going in the face of people laughing at you or so much skepticism? It's because you build inner resilience and they would take every single match that they won to build more and more and more resilience. And that's you. Every single time you face a challenge or a setback, your brain will rewire itself, program it to remember when you overcame that and use it as confidence, use it as leverage to know, okay, I can overcome this, I can do this because I've done it before. And I cannot say that enough, That, but it's a, a mindset of reframing even a failure. You can leverage that, you can learn. How can I do this better? What can I do to win the next time? How can I close that deal? How can I repeat this when you start asking those questions especially with athletes they are trained on this they are drilled on this to look and examine themselves have this awareness and this mindfulness about everything down to a science the way their body moves the way they perform how they can enhance their performance even under pressure down to taking breaths which we're learning right we know this with mindfulness-based stress reduction there are things, there are ways to overcome stress that will allow you to be able to perform better. And so when I think of the confidence of the, of the Williams sisters, I am reminded, I may not be an athlete, but I can channel that same mindset. If I remember the things that I have gone through before, my brain will support and look for evidence. It's the RAS, the reticular activating system will look for evidence of completing whatever I set my heart to, my mind to. So as long as your actions and your values are in alignment, you have to continue to come through for yourself, stick to your own word, or else your body and your mind are not dumb. They won't believe you. It won't believe you. You won't believe you. So cultivating confidence is a measure, is a matter of taking risk as well. Because the more risk you take and the more you accomplish those things, the more you build up your own confidence and your esteem and you're literally rewiring your brain to believe in you. Give me a heart if you think that that is something really powerful to tap into. The confidence you can have in yourself, cultivating confidence and resilience is something that you gain that self-belief is something you gain as entrepreneurs, professionals, when you actually do. Put your money where your mouth is. Okay, I'm gonna play this clip for you. Um, let me just, no, this is a real clip. This isn't from the movie. This is Richard Williams defending his daughter on national television. She's just smiling the entire time. She's probably like, yep, that's, that's my dad. Did you think you could beat her? I know I can beat her. Okay, so the question, because he said it kind of fast, this is on ABC News. Did you think you could beat her? Um, the news reporter asked, do you think you can beat her? Okay, and so here is Venus Williams' response. Did you think you could beat her? I know I can beat her. You know you can beat her. Very confident. I'm very confident. You say it so easily. Why? Because I believe it. Pat, Pat, here, if you don't mind. And let me tell you why. 
But she has said, she said it with so much confidence the first time. But you keep going on and on. And on. So we can't keep interrupting. I mean, if you want. Well, you got to understand that you're dealing with an image of a 14 year old child. And this child going to be out there playing when your old ass and me going to be in the grave. When she says something, we done told you what's happening. You're dealing with a little black kid and let her be a kid. She done answered it with a lot of confidence. Leave that alone. What do you feel inside when you're on the court? I feel good. I feel good. <laughs> I love that so much. Give me a heart if you two love that. He wasn't going to let his daughter be broken down. He wasn't going to allow her to be intimidated or interrogated by a news reporter that just really wanted to talk her, shake her out of her own confidence. And I think that is something that we can definitely, it's a powerful lesson in self-belief. It's a powerful lesson in self-belief. So I want to open the floor to you and ask you as entrepreneurs, as professionals, how do you cultivate confidence in what you do, especially when you face extreme challenges, whatever they are, how do you cultivate confidence? I think we can learn from one another and be encouraged and reminded, oh yeah, that is, that is how I can do that. First, um, so I think it is very much something that you need to practice, uh, just like going to the gym, building that muscle, and believing that you can do, do it consistently and that you can do better and better. And it really helps to have role models. It really helps also to have grown up in an environment where that is fostered and nurtured within you. But the most important part, if you don't have that, because we don't all have the same circumstances, we might not have a, had a role model in our childhood that has taught us that. But the most important part is really surround yourself with people who are where you want to be which is what this room is about and um, just never give up give up on yourself understand that success doesn't look linear it's an up and down it's a never-ending journey and um, we are doing that ourselves Andrea we are living it every day and that's a beautiful and powerful part of it go deeper on um the success isn't linear. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just, especially in business, when you think you are at a point where things are stable or you have won that client or you're finally at a point where the cash flow is where you need it to be, then something happens where that situation changes again and you are not in a quite as secure position as you thought. And the thing is that over time, over the years, of course, that gets much better and the oscillations are not as big. But what also happens is you can get used to that because you can start gaining trust in things working out if you do your part. Mm -hmm. Now, some people, some people cannot get used to it. And um, then that just means that business and entrepreneurship is not for them, which is okay. But a lot of us can, it's just, it takes time. And we need to understand that we can achieve more in a decade uh, than what we can do in a day. And people are so focused on what they can achieve in the short term. Um, and that's of course not how we grow businesses. Mm -hmm. I love that. Thanks, Shankar. Aisha, welcome. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. So I would agree with Shankar. I would just add that for me, it's always repetition, of course, just continually repeating 
things to myself and affirming certain sayings, certain things that are, you know, I am strong, I am courageous, I can, I can do this, I have the motivation, I have the willpower. Um, reading certain books, The Power of the Unlimited Imagination is one of my favorites. Um, Think and Grow Rich, of course, Atomic Habits. Um, one of my other favorites is uh, The Game of Life and How to Play It by Florence Govell Shen. She gives a lot of little sayings that you can repeat to yourselves. Calming my nervous system. So I use the EFT method, which is, uh, I believe it's emotional framing technique. So tapping certain places on your body just to kind of calm yourself if you're feeling a little um, apprehensive or nervous. Of course, prayer helps for me. And then really sitting with my thoughts because a lot of times um, if something is, why am I feeling triggered? So just trying to figure out, okay, if I'm feeling a little nervous in this moment or this space, what is keeping me from getting to that next level? So I'm having to sit back and think about, hey, calm down, sit, sit with that for a second. Why does that bother you? Why does that make you emotional or trigger you or make you angry or upset? You know, really turning that internal and trying to figure out where that struggle is coming from so that I can move forward. That's a wonderful share. I think that we can all take something away from that, um, particularly the tapping. You know, before I even knew what tapping was, I was doing it. I probably saw it from someone in my family. Also, oh, Shankar went away, and T, I brought you up on stage, but somehow you slipped back into the audience. Nevertheless, I was actually being observed by a chiropractor who who told me what I was doing, and I'm not sure I was nervous or stressed or whatever, but. Arguably, it could have been because I was tapping in a certain way and, um, of course, all of the other things that you mentioned. Really, it's kind of getting outside of yourself. I mean, when you talk about the books that you read and, and your takeaways from them, I think it is another way to surround yourself with people, albeit by authors and books, who are where you want to be or who have a mindset that you want to cultivate in yourself. And so I think that um, there's so much, there's so much. We're going to probably continue this series on athletes and just examining them because, you know, all of the things which you were talking, positive self-talk and doing affirmations, of course, that's a huge part of having a mindfulness and incorporating it in, in your day. And T, I see that you have come back up, so we'll give you a, a, just about a minute to speak and we'll, we'll go into some of those affirmations and Shankar you have also reappeared but thank you for coming Aisha I, I completely agree so T what do you have for us good morning Hi. good morning Andre actually that was an accident oh <laughs> I was trying to uh, get Aisha's profile okay I love what she was saying yeah, I, I, I'm the same mind, and I'm a big fan of Octavia Butler, mm -hmm. and she has her vision statement, and she always, she scripts her life, she scripted her life, and she always ends her vision statement with, so be it, see it, and I love that, so, thank you. Awesome shares today, awesome shares. I want to give us a couple of affirmations, and... We're going to go into our day remembering everything that we have accomplished, even against all odds. And we're going to bring that into our day and bring it into our week. And this December is going to be the best December you have ever had thus far. And it's only going to get better from here. And I, I really do believe that. So if you'll all take a breath. Repeat after me. I believe in my abilities. I trust my inner strength to lead me to success. I embrace challenges as opportunities to grow stronger and more resilient. I set clear goals and work towards them with determination and focus. Speak kindly to myself with encouragement. I dedicate myself 
understanding that hard work leads to extraordinary achievements. I value and nurture the support systems around me. I'm a trailblazer, breaking barriers. I balance strength with grace. Um, another breath in and out. All right, so before we close this room, I will ask you one more time, bring all of this mindfulness, everything that you have learned today to the Grow Challenge on December 19th. You sign up by going to yougrow.club. You can click my profile or Shankar's and there's a link that'll take you to a landing page. This is your opportunity. Build that resilience, show up. I know it's really easy to not do and just say, I'll do it later, I'll do it later. Challenge yourself, push yourself past the limits, show up, bring confidence to the table and have mentors that will help you and guide you. It is completely free. And I want to thank you for being here with us today. Thank you so much for the shares, Aisha and Tanisha. And do come back tomorrow, 7.30, I'm sorry, 7 a.m. Central Time. And we are going to discuss Muhammad Ali. So we'll see you there. And if you haven't already gone to AndreaFerguson.com, to get the affirmations and updates and all of those things, make sure that you do it. And we will see you tomorrow. Have a lovely, wonderful, mindful day. Take care. Bye-bye.